Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while. My name is Yuya Chang. You can call me Zachary. I'm a first year student on students at McGill University. So I've been getting some questions related to my CV, my extracurricular, and also my GPA. So I thought that I should make a video about it. Hopefully that me reviewing my McGill application will be able to inspire or just to guide prospective students who are thinking of applying to McGill Dentistry. So without further ado, I'll start. So first I'm gonna start with the GPA. I think that's what everyone is looking for. That's what everyone is worried about. And just a little disclaimer, I've applied to McGill twice before getting in and so I'm just going to go through the different GPAs I've had throughout. So first, uh, so this is back in 20... So let's start with my 2018 application. So this was in my senior year where I haven't finished my fall semester nor my winter semester. That's why none of my courses from those two semesters counted in this application. So you can see that my McGill GPA after conversion was a 3.91 GPA out of four. I, as you can see here, it's not even the, one, the whole 120, it's only the 87. So I'm missing a lot of credits. So basically all my last year of undergrad. Now if we switch to my 2019 application, which is after my undergrad. So as you can see, my GPA has dropped a bit. Uh, I was just not in a good place mentally. And so that's why a few semesters or a few courses that it went bad. And I, I think but it's just part of life. There's nothing much that you can do about it. Yes, I could have written an extenuating circumstances a letter to McGill saying that why my grades have uh, suffered a bit during my dark time. I guess my GPA was still very good, so I didn't think that I would need it. Yes, it would have been better if I had my full GPA without my dark times, my, with some of my bad semesters, but I think overall it was still a solid GPA, so I didn't really think too much about it. And then, as you can see here, my science GPA is pretty low. It's like a 3.1. It's like, it's, I, I think it's super low that you can see why I haven't gone in, uh, in 2018 or 2019. For me, this was the thing that was pulling me down. No, no matter how good I did in the interview, back then, science GPA was still taken into account. So just keep that science GPA in mind because I'll talk more about it later on. And last but not least, this is the application that I have for 2020, which is the year that I got into McGill Dentistry. So as you can see here, my GPA has lowered a bit by 0.01. I'm not really sure why it has decreased because I put the same courses that I've taken in undergrad, the same grades, so I'm not sure why it's uh, one grade less. So long story short, yes, it is important to have somewhat of a decent GPA, but having a good GPA isn't final. 2018, I'm in 2019 application. So I've emailed the admission office saying that, is there anything that I can improve on or is there anything that they can help me out? So let's say for the 2018 cycle, my 3.91 GPA was ranked 20, 25th out of 150 applicants. So which is still very good. So I, I'm not too worried about that. And then when it comes down to the following year, the 2019 cycle, here it says, my academic rank was 39th out of 189. So again, I'm placed a bit lower, but it's also there's more applicants this year for the, for that year. I don't think they do this in, anymore in terms of giving you so much feedback about your application. Now they basically send you a very generic email saying that you are placed this rank uh, on this phase of the application. And this is the only information that you get. From it. I just took my shot. I knew some schools would never give the feedback and since my first year they gave me a feedback so I just kept emailing them just to see what I can improve on. So that's why I'm saying that GPA is not everything. GPA can help you to a certain extent but what comes next is your CV and also your academic context. So now I'm just gonna go through my CV to talk about my work experience, my volunteering experience, my research, and also my extracurricular stuff. So let's start with the education section. So here you can see that I put my master's in physical therapy, which I was still doing at that time. So that was in 2021 that I graduated. And also I did my bachelor's at U Ottawa and my DEC uh, at Seja Duluth Taiwe. So these are very typical ones. So I guess here, the reason why I put my physio is because of the academic context, which is 10% uh, of the whole application cycle before interview and that is considered a professional degree so that's why i put it there so that allows me to gain some points in that section if we scroll down here we have my work experiences uh, i put my student physical therapist uh, stage at lakeshore general hospital 
Uh, so basically, it's like the general stuff that we do as a physio. So for anyone who is post-surgery, post-op, orthopedic surgery, I took care of them. I gave them exercises. I helped them get back on their feet. And usually it's like from fractures or just... Uh, yeah, basically fractures or elective surgeries. So here I also put different measures that I've tried to advocate. Uh, so just to allow us to have a better communication between the MDT, the doctors, and also the nurses. Yes, I could have put all my four stages, but I, th I felt that it wasn't really needed because you know, I would just be redundant and that would just show that I don't have that much experience other than my physical stages. So that's why I chose not to put my other ones. So for my second entry, I put my time when I worked at Lori Optical. And here I just explained what I did, what, what were my responsibilities, and I, this is how many hours I worked there. This is nothing special that is really tailored to dentistry or medicine. So it's just me working full time and part time to to gain more experiences in terms of communication or just customer service in general. So now when it comes to service to community, uh, I put my teaching assistant. I think that's what uh, really showed who I am as a person. So that's why I put it as my first entry. So I was a T at the Auto Manager in School in Ottawa. And basically for the past seven years. So basically here again, I just described uh, what I did and what I learned from it. So I'm not going to read through it. As you can see here, I almost worked eight years at, as a TA in, at this school. So every single week I would go there and I would give three hours of my time to help basically children learn Chinese or, or just appreciate the Chinese language. As for my second entry, I have my volunteering experience that I did when I went back to Taiwan. So this was at the Eden Social Welfare Foundation. Um, I was the classroom assistant. Didn't know how to really translate my role, but I guess that was the most fitting translation that I had. The one thing I would like to note here is that this is a big chance that I had and big opportunity that I had to help children with physical and mental disabilities. And it, it is super different. Throughout your years as a healthcare professional or just as a parent or as an adult, you're gonna be faced with people with different conditions or difficulties. So that's why I felt that it was important for me to learn and just to get a sense of how it is, how difficult it is, and what are the different tips and tricks that those teachers had for me. And basically, I only did that for two weeks. Unfortunately, I wish I could have done longer. From my, la my last entry in this section, I have badminton instructor at the Auto Manager School. In this one hour, I would be teaching them badminton and yeah, I don't know what else to add. Now comes the research part. So here it is the research, research associate, my master's in physical therapy. We also had a research project that we had to do. And this was our research project that we were willing to publish. So the order of the authors have changed since then. So back then we just sent our manuscript to, for publication. So we didn't really have it published yet. And this was basically the title of our article. And so if we go next to the research associate, uh, during my undergrad, my final year, there was a like, course related to research that I participated in. So here we were published in Acta Psychologica. So and this is what I did for the research during the research. And last entry in terms of research, I think this was very important for me to add it to stand out as an applicant. I was able to present my honest thesis at a uh, conference. So it's not every day that you get to talk uh, to different students or researchers at a conference about a topic of interest that we all share commonly. Since I did my honors thesis in cognitive aging, so this was basically the best setting for me to present my honors thesis and to just to branch out to make some connections. So when it comes to the extracurricular activities, the ECT is the things that are most important. I was part of the student council. I was the PT curriculum rep and that allowed me to do so many things such as talking to the faculty about the different things that we think should be changed or should not be changed regarding the curriculum. And also I have this entry right here which is essentially a student member representing SPOT, so the School of Physical and Occupational Therapy. So this was a well office initiative where in this community we tried to find different things that we can do to help 
students uh, have a better learning experience at McGill. So whether it be in school, so uh, classes, courses, or just in clinics, how to interact with uh, supervisors. So this was once or twice a semester, but for me, it was just once a semester. But for my winter semester, that's when COVID started. So we didn't really get the chance to have a second meeting. So next is badminton player, where I played badminton with my friends uh, on Fridays and Saturdays. The reason why I put this is just to show that I did sports outside of school so I not only did I study but I also tried to stay active. So yes I haven't started badminton when I only came to McGill. I started when I was in my undergrad at UOttawa. During that time I would be playing around 9 to 12 hours a week on top of trying to maintain a good GPA so I think that would have been better thing to put but I didn't. So this is probably the only thing that I may change in my CV if I ever do need to do it again. After that it's all my shadowing experiences where I explain I shadow general dentists and also orthodontists. And also, I also shadow, shadow much more, so periodontists and endodontists. So for my shadowing experiences here, I put these three entries due to the fact that I do feel that these are the three entries that would allow me to show I have a good grasp of what the profession entails, what is dentistry in general. Maybe I could have put my periodontist, my endodontist experiences, but this is what I went with. And now we're gonna talk about my uh, awards and distinctions. So this entry allowed me to distinguish myself a bit more than the other applicants because this is from the House of Commons, the parliament basically, and it's from my the MP of Ottawa South. It is awarded to me because of my volunteering experiences. So that in itself, it shows a big thing about who I am as a person. And for the se second and third entry, it's basically just about grades, so for me, I was Dean's Honors. Like it's not the most important thing about it because a lot of people would have Dean's Honors or would have distinctions. So it just comes down to if you have some awards or not. And if you don't have any awards related to your grades, that's okay because being a Dean's Honors is different in each school. So some may have easier criteria than others. I, I don't think it's that important for you to be part of Dean's Honors or distinction and just comes down to if you have a good GPA or not. So last but not least, this is to show what I did as my hobby. So let's start with badminton. Um, badminton has always been a big part of my life. So as I said, ever since undergrad, me and my friends would always play nine to 12 hours. And then comes masters, I would play eight hours. So this allowed me to show my passion for badminton, but also for physical health. And I think this is a very important quote that I have here. In French, it sounds better. So it's a, it's pris sain dans un corps sain. So I translated that to a healthy mind and a healthy body. I think it resonates with what I believe. So you need to have a good physical health on top of a mental health. So you cannot neglect one for the other or you, you have to have both in general. So basically it's just to have a good life balance regarding your studies, your friends and family, and also your hobbies. So. So here I show that I like to do origami. So I started very young. So starting from paper boat to paper cranes and slowly transitioned to different things such as 3D origamis. I'm gonna put a picture right here. Uh, so this is basically one of the models amongst many that I've done. Um, so it's just for me to show that I did value creativity. I did value art and it is important for me to have a good hand dexterity or just a manual dexterity in general. This is basically it for my CV. In general, I just want to show bits and parts of myself that is hard to show just through my GPA. So that's why I put different entries about leadership, about me helping out in the community. So I think the best way to know what to put in your CV is to follow the CAD meds roles, which is basically the different traits that people are looking in a doctor. So if we look at my uh, 2019 to 2020 application cycle uh, feedback, here we can see that my CV was ranked 20th out of 189. So when it came down to last year's application, I wasn't too worried about it. And I just knew that I just, I'm pretty much set to have a good CV and I just need to put different things that I that I consider important to add. For Casper, I was ranked 28th out of the whole 189 applicants. I'm not sure which quartile that is because they only started giving the quartiles this year in 2021. I guess I'm either third or fourth quartile. So for my 2019 to 2020 application cycle, my rank before MMIs was eighth out of 189. So that's why coming in last year, 
when I applied for my 2020 to 2021 cycle, I was pretty confident that I was going to receive an interview because I was ranked pretty high up. And now it just came down to me doing well in the interview. If we look at my MMI ranking from two years ago, I was ranked 37th out of 80 applicants that were interviewed. As I said before, my son's GPA was horrible. It was a 3.14 and they still took my son's GPA into account for post-interview. Uh, so that was, so two years ago, they took 80% for the MMI score and 20% for the Sun GPA. So that's why if you look at my Sun GPA, I'm always bottom 10. And that's why my finals rank was 60th out of 80. So I'm just thinking if I had a normal Sun GPA, it doesn't even need to be a 4.0, maybe a 3.5. Could I have gone in in class of 2024? Possibly, I don't know. I'm not sure. So I don't regret being in the class of 2025. I love my classmates. I love the friends that I've made in that cohort. I, feel, I just feel that our cohort is very close to each other. So I will not change anything. The last part of the video is for DAT. Just a little disclaimer, my DAT score is far from being optimal, far from being amazing because all the dental schools in Quebec only require two things. So with the manual dexterity and also the PAT and you only need to meet the minimum of it. So I didn't study at all for it. So this is basically my DAT score. So these are the two scores that French schools are looking for. And these are, these meet the minimum. And again, it's just a minimum that you have to attain. And this is far beyond the minimum. So I'm not too worried about that. And as for the other sections, I just did basically A, B, C, D, E, and then came back. For these, I just basically messed around because they do not really look at these scores. So long story short, if you're applying to McGill, UDM, or Laval, you just need to focus on your PAT and also your soap carving skills. So that was pretty much it for my whole dental application. I hope this helped you a lot. I tried to be as transparent as I could, showing my ranking for my GPA, for my CV, for my Casper, and for my overall ranking. But then again, I don't think they do this anymore. So it is, it is harder for us to know what to work on. I just hope that you're able to base your CV or GPA off of mine to know a bit where you're situated in terms of the other applicants. Keep in mind that every single year is different. So it really depends on the other applicants' GPAs and also their CVs. So it just comes down to luck a bit. Unfortunately, it is about luck. So just to keep in mind that everything that I show in terms of the rankings are for in-province uh, applicants only because I'm from in province. So that's why out of province and international students may require a higher standards when it comes down to GPA or CV. So once again, if you have any questions related to dentistry, dental school, or just McGill in general, feel free to message me on Instagram or just leave a comment down below and I'll answer them. And if you do wanna watch more content such as these ones, don't forget to subscribe, drop a like, and click the notification bell. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.